let's take a test drive of Fusion 360 from Autodesk. And I'm not going to be comparing Fusion 360 to Creo Parametric because they're really in two different market segments. I'll be comparing Fusion 360 to Onshape and they do have certain similarities between each other. First off, they're both cloud-based, so you won't be storing your files locally. You'll be storing them in the cloud. Second, with Onshape, you can access that through a web browser, which means that you can use it on basically any computer platform, whether it's a Mac or a PC. You can even use it on a tablet or a phone, whereas Fusion 360 is an application like a desktop application like say creo parametric third thing to mention before we jump in is the cost up until october of 2020 both were free and you can still get on shape a basic account for free with fusion 360 they no longer have a free option but anyhow that is enough setup Let's go into using this and I'm going to recreate making the same parts that I did when I did my test drive of Onshape way back around November 2019 when PTC first acquired them. So let's jump into creating a brand new design. I will go to the new drop down menu and here we have new design. You can see that there are some other additional choices in here like an electronics design, a drawing, drawing template. Let's choose to create our new design and that's going to come open in a different tab. You'll notice that we have a grid displayed on the computer screen. Also in the upper right hand corner, you have a view cube similar to both SolidWorks and Onshape. I prefer to see the origin. If I expand this folder, you can see that we have a location of the origin, plus you have axes for the X direction, Y direction, Z direction, plus planes for X, Y, X, Z, and Y, Z. Let's use the little eyeglasses in order to make them visible. Also, I prefer not to see the grid. I understand why the grid is very helpful because Fusion 360 is really aimed towards the maker market, people who like to have their own 3D printers or maybe in a CNC at home and make their own stuff. But I'm going to turn off the display of the layout grid. I'm also going to turn off grid snap. And so here you can see the different axes and the planes and the origin for locating stuff. And I'm gonna start off by creating a brand new sketch and a feature. Again, I'm gonna make that connecting rod and the piston pin. So I'm going to choose this particular plane and then I can right click. You get a pop-up menu. And first off, you have this carousel. I remember first seeing this in Autodesk Inventor about 10 years ago but I'm going to create a brand new sketch and that reorients me so that my sketch plane is flat parallel to the computer screen and it brings the grid back. Also, we have a menu that opens with a bunch of different options that you can turn on and off. In the ribbon, you have the basic entities that you are used to creating including your lines, rectangles, circles, lines. We also have the ability to dimension from here. If you go to the Create drop-down menu, you have a bunch of additional choices. And I want to create a circle. You can see that there are a number of different circle types. I will create a circle using the center and the diameter. I'll click on there and I'll let it snap right into the origin and then drag it out. You can see how it shows the value of the diameter. And I can start by plugging in the values that I want to use. Let's make this one a value of 45. And then let me create a, another circle. Let's hit the circle command. I'm going to eyeball it right about here and then drag it out. And this one is going to be a value of 40. Let's plug in the number and hit the enter key. And let's also throw in a dimension for the distance between these. So I'm going to dimension from there to there. 
and then left mouse click and this should be a value of 165. Now I'm going to move things and be aware I, I will be very awkward moving things around on the computer screen. At this point I'm using four different CAD programs and they all have a different way of spinning, panning, and zooming. So if it looks like I am fumbling, I am. Let's hit the line command. I'm going to create a line going from here to here. And let's also create another line going from here. And you can see that we're getting the angle and dimensions on there. And I'm just going to get it about over here. I'm, del I'm deliberately creating the line incorrectly because I prefer to put in my different constraints to make sure that I end up getting the tangency that we want. Here you can see the little tangent symbol on the screen. Let's do the same thing again and again and one last time there we go and so let me make sure that i think i'm missing one other constraint i want to make sure that the second circle is vertical it looks like it's a little off in there so let me see if i can go to horizontal vertical and i'll pick this center and that center and it adjusted it You'll also notice that the sketch went from blue to black, indicating that it is fully constrained. So that's the same sort of behavior that you would see in SolidWorks and also in Onshape. I am happy with my sketch. I don't need to do any other additional trimming. So let's hit the check mark in order to finish the sketch. I'm going to use the shift key and the middle mouse button to rotate it a little bit. Now I can create an extrude. You can do that from this command in the ribbon. When you hover your mouse over it, you get a nice tool tip. If we go to the create drop down menu, you can see all the other additional creation commands. And so here's another difference with Onshape. In Onshape, you essentially have all your different commands in the same ribbon. Also, you uh, don't have these various different drop down menus. You have some overflow menus or some icons with some drop downs where you might have like four or five different choices of icons, but you don't have these old kind of Windows style menus. Let's go to the extrude command, and here you can see the dialog box that opens up. For the profiles, I will select this profile and also this one. I'm just picking them with the left mouse button, I'm not holding down any other keys on the keyboard. And for the direction, rather than one side, I want to choose symmetric. And here's something that fumbled me the first time when I was doing this. Here we have the ability to specify either the half length or the whole length. So that is something that I really haven't seen in many other CAD packages when you're doing a symmetric depth. Usually you are doing the whole depth. So I'm going to choose that. And for the depth, let's use a value of 15. And that looks good. By the way, it looks like I completed the feature. Another interesting thing about the Fusion 360 interface, so you have this list up at the top, which looks a lot like the model tree in Creo Parametric or the feature list that you have in Onshape. Here you can see that we have, okay, our document settings. This is where you can change the units. We have named views. And so the templates that come from Fusion 360 have three different, or excuse me, four different named views available to you. We already took a look at the origin. You have a bodies folder. So right now everything is going into body one. Later on, I will create a second body for the piston pin and here we have our sketch listed in there but if you take a look down at the bottom of the screen we have a list of the features that we're creating so sort of like again your model tree features are down at the bottom of the screen and you have an arrow or a bar that you can drag to insert at a previous point in your parts history or rearrange the different features in here you also have the sort of like play button step backwards go to the end go to the beginning and so forth for these different buttons. Oh yeah, speaking of which, I wanna mention another big difference between Fusion 360 and say Creo Parametric or Onshape. If I go to this button, 
here we have the different workspaces that you have available right now i'm in the design workspace that allows me to create models and you can see that we also have generative design render animation simulation manufacture and then drawing when you're creating a design or a model in fusion 360 you're not really starting off creating a part or an assembly you're creating a model and then within that model well it can be a bunch of features but you can also create parts in here or insert parts which will then sort of make it an assembly but again it's all just a model you don't have that distinction between say dot prts and dot asms as you have in creo parametric and so for example in inventor i believe everything is a dot prt so anyhow i'm creating everything right now in my model document okay let's try creating our second sketch i will select the plane that i want to sketch on right mouse click and then create sketch again it puts us back into our sketch environment let's create a line i will click on the line tool i'm just going to make a horizontal line and then hit the escape key to get out of the line creation tool for dimensioning this i want to dimension to the bottom over here so i will create a point that will facilitate that i'll choose point and then eyeball it right about over there to make sure it's in the right place let's try putting in a coincident constraint and then picking the arc and also let's try putting in a vertical constraint let's see let me go to the drop down horizontal vertical and try picking there and there and that way should be in the right place now let's try our dimension from here to there and make it a distance of 40 Let's try that once more. Let's try coincident from there to there. There we go, and it moved the line. Let's see if we can also do coincident from there to there, and from there to there. Hey, got it right. If I stink at sketching, yes, it is essentially my first day using Fusion 360. All right, let's hit the check mark to finish the sketch. And now, once again, we will do an extrude, and it automatically selected that section we are working on. Let's change the direction to symmetric and do the full depth. And for this one, it's going to be a value of 20. Accidentally removed material. Let's go to the extrude down at the bottom and then edit the feature. And right now, the operation is cut. Let me change this to a join and then hit the OK button. And that way we have added our material to the model. Uh, that looks a little too small. Let's once again edit the feature. Join me for part two where we continue the test drive of Fusion 360. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.